Jesus, to you I look for your spirit to anoint me in this preaching time. I'm asking you to move that we might be blessed for a word from the Lord. Let your servant be increasing, your spirit increasing. Every now and then, 
we'll turn on one of these you know, side streets and it end up being a dead end. And sometimes it's colder sites that you turn around fairly easy and sometimes they just don't where to turn around and you need some help to come down there and if you spin your wheels long enough in the mud you're going to get stuck. Yes. These dead end streets represents the wrong way, the wrong decision in life. And the mud represents the sin we get stuck in when we get down there where we ain't supposed to be. Oh yeah, you know about sin. When we make the wrong decisions and the wrong turns in life. And how many of us have made the wrong turns here lately? Don't raise your hand. Our faith says, I have not seen God, but I have experienced God in my life. When the question comes up. No, I ain't seen him, but I didn't experience it. Yeah. No man has seen God. But his spirit is real. I have had the hand of God move in my situation. Just like the wind. Yeah. I have not seen the wind, but I've seen the effects and the results of the wind. And what it can do. The same wind that we breathe air by is the same wind that'll blow down and rip your house apart. Oh, you know, that's how God is. The same God that'll add the blessing, add the curse. If you ain't careful. If you don't hearken to do to his word. And if you do, the blessings will overtake you. And if you don't, the curses will overtake you. That's in the book. In the book. Same God. Same God. Act just like the wind. We just simply don't know all the answers about how God does what he does and probably never will know all the answers on this side of life. Some things are always going to be a mystery. Y'all know that, right? If I could explain God, he wouldn't be God. How can the creature explain the creator? First Timothy tells us in uh, chapter 3 and 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of Godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Now, I don't know how in the world God done this, but this is who Jesus is. Maybe this happens so the power of God might be seen in him. I don't know how God let a cow eat green grass, a brown cow eat green grass and come out with white milk. That ain't my business. That's God's business, you know. The Word of God says, if any man think that he know anything, he know of nothing, yet as he ought to know it. And in plain English, this says anyone who claims to know all the answers don't really know very much. You don't know it like you think you know it. You ain't no more saved than nobody else saved. You ain't no more holier than nobody else. We all the same. And we all got to line up to the feet of Jesus. Because none of us measure up to this holy Savior, Jesus the Christ. I kind of understand now that some of the things you and I been through was not a result of something we done or our parents. But God was working something far greater than we could have ever imagined. Yes, yes, yes. And I've been through some stuff. Yes. It is true that all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord, for those who are called according to his purpose. God can take what you got yourself into and make it out of something he needed you to be in. Y'all know that. Just as it is in this passage, this man was born blind for no apparent reason other than the power of God might be seen in him. The Bible says he didn't sin, nor his parents had sinned, and the question came up from the disciples that was walking with Jesus and said, Rabbi, teacher, why in the world is this man blind? Now, who calls this in your family? 
Then these folks family, Jesus said, no, it ain't like that this time. Yeah. God done this. Each and every one of us in our lives has purpose. God has designated just for us our purpose. Purpose that only you can fulfill. You can't do my stuff and I can't do your stuff. God got something specifically assigned for you to do. And I can't get not one organized key on that organ. God got your specific purpose and I got mine. And you can't do mine and I can't do yours. And if you don't do your part, it didn't get done. Amen. That's all right. You have a specific purpose in your life. And, and the only way you're going to know what your purpose is in life, you've got to go to the one that gave the purpose, which is God the Father. Through Jesus Christ, and you will know what your purpose is. A lot of times we just run around spinning our wheels trying to figure out what we ought to do. If we didn't make ourselves, God made us. We ought to go to the one that made us. We can tell us what we ought to be doing. Or you'll spend a whole lot of time getting down to where you should have been the whole time. And look how much thought you could have been in life if you went on back to God and started when it asked him what I was supposed to be doing. Mm. Oh, I and I'm talking to him because you know the spirit cut me first. In verse 4 of this chapter 9, Jesus said we must quickly carry out the task assigned to us by the one who sent us. Yeah. The night is coming and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus. The word of God. Manifest in the flesh. Is the light. Jesus is that light that shines in darkness and the darkness does not comprehend. You know when you turn on the light in the natural sense, the, the darkness leaves the room. They have no fellowship together. The light is greater than the darkness. And when the light is absent, the darkness reigns in the world. And if you don't go where you're supposed to go with the light, it's going to be dark in that area. However, Jesus said he would send back the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Yes. And after the Holy Ghost will come, you should have power to be my witnesses of the light. Telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, right there where you live. And throughout the deal of other neighborhoods and Samaria to other races of people and other kinds and in the other most parts of the world to the ends of the earth. In other words, you got to carry the light everywhere you go. Right now, it is still day. And we are that light. And we better get busy then about our father's business. Stop using our own agenda when it's kingdom business time. Stop doing our own thing when we've been saved by a life that we couldn't pay for. It's time to be about our Father's business. How do we know if we are the light? The question might come. Because Jesus told us we are that light. You are the light of the world. A light like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one likes a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. In other words, everything we do ought to point to Jesus. Everywhere we go, the light ought to shine. How are you going to know that we belong to God? for the love we have for each other. We ought to lift up the name of Jesus every chance we get and point to the Father which sent us. After the rapture, when the church, the ones who possess the Holy Spirit, how many of you got the Holy Spirit this morning? Amen. Well, after the rapture, the ones who possess the Holy Spirit, which is the light, has been taken out with Jesus, the darkness will reign. It will surely be night in that day. We the believers know that the day can come at any time. 
Jesus is coming back like a thief in the night. Yes. And you better be ready. You better have some oil in your mouth and the fire trim and burn. Lord, don't let our fire go out. Because we know not the hour when the Son of Man shall come. You better be ready. A lot of things God is doing is so that the power of God might be seen in him. The story goes on to say that Jesus spit on the ground, made mud with salah, spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which means sin. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. He had what Jesus told him to do. Looks like to me that we can come to church day in and day out. Talk about preaching. Hear the word of God. Get our feel good on. Or some of us know how to feel good and shout good and run around good. And however, we don't ever experience the real power of God until we do exactly what he asked us to do. I mean, we come in here and get a, a quick fix and go back out in the world and do the same thing over and over. Yeah. Can't tell nobody what I, the preacher preached about, but I should have felt it. Yeah. Well, he preached good, but uh, well, what did he preach about? I don't know, but I felt it. Yeah. It sounded good. That preacher. <laughs> Man. <laughs> but it looks like to me that we can come to church day out and day out, hear the word and get our feelings on however, don't experience the real power of God until we do exactly what he asked us to do. The miracle don't happen until we put the word into being in a mixture of faith and action at the same time. Just like you came in here today. You sat down on that pew and didn't even check it to see if you were holding you and you flopped in it. And trust it and believe in faith and it's going to hold you and then something to break at any time. But we check Jesus every time we come up to a situation. Jesus didn't do a whole lot either. Y'all know that, right? Jesus just used his spirit and said the word. A lot of us need a word today from the Lord. Reminds me of what the Bible says about having faith the size of a mustard seed. Being able to say that this mountain move and the mountain got to move. And let the truth be known, the last mountain that I had trouble with already been moved Amen. by faith. The last hill I had to climb, I'm already on the other side. The last dilemma I had to come up against. Is behind me now because of Jesus. Yes, sir. And y'all know, folk know when you've been changed too, don't they? Yes, sir. People that are still walking in the darkness see the light turned on. They see it better than you, and they're constantly trying to turn your light off. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, they're constantly trying to turn your light off because your light exposes their darkness. Yes, sir. And when they see you coming, they talking and they come now, put that stuff up. Watch your language and they come now, they're trying to see the light coming. Expose the dark deeds. And people know when you've been changed. People know you're not the same anymore. The Bible says in this passage, in chapter 9 here, his neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other. Now, isn't it the man? Who used to sit in bed? I know that. That's the one used to bed. Right there. Uh -huh. Some said he was, and Bubba said, "No, nah, it's just looking at him. That ain't him. That ain't Bonnie. That was Bonnie. You know, Bonnie was a rock. You know, he ain't saved in the church. Well, right. <laughs> Here, lets me know folks are gonna be talking about you among themselves all the time. Uh -huh. Even though." Religious folk, and, it, and these were religious folk. They talk about the Jews and the neighbors and stuff. These is religious folk gonna be talking about you. 
You know, everybody religious ain't the same. Everybody religious don't have a holy ghost. Everybody religious hasn't felt the power of God in their life. Everybody religious hasn't experienced a miracle in their life. So they yet not have gotten the word of God. They yet not have believed what Jesus can do. They yet not have went to where the power is. But you know folk don't talk. It's in the Bible. Religious folk don't talk about you. Don't you worry about it. They talk about Jesus the Christ. And that's all right. As a matter of fact, them talking about us is going to stir up the interest in them knowing what happened to you, creating an opportunity for you to tell them about Jesus. Yeah. You go ahead and talk about me because you want to know what in the world happened to me. And I'm going to tell you what happened to me. It wasn't nobody but Jesus. Let them talk. If you wasn't doing something, they wouldn't have nothing to talk about. If you hadn't made no change, if the light wasn't on, they wouldn't have nothing to say. You ought to praise God when you see them talking about you. Lift up holy hand. I thank you, Jesus. Change and pain in my life. That's what you ought to do. Just like in this case, verse 10, they ask, who healed you? Yeah. What happened? As I say, how did you get your sight, man? Well, I know you were blind. Yeah, yeah. I know you, Barnaby. Clay. Yeah. I know what you used to do and where you used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Your name Richard. I know you. You build it up to the sea. I know you. Yeah. Know you. Yeah. People who used to, you used to be with, and they see you change. They want to know. How did they build to take place? They want to know how did you become who you are? She goes, it took a miracle. Yes, sir. And I ain't talking about no little. Yes, sir. When you calculated in man's estimation, it was just a little thing to God to fix me up. Amen. But if you were looking at it from my perspective, it took some kind of miracle to straighten me out. And, and it took more than one. And it's still going to take some power of God to keep me going the right way. Amen. Amen. I, I kind of I understand what I was talking about me too because I was once just like the blind man. I was blind and without sight. No sense of direction. Going to and from seeking who might make a vow. Right. Oh yeah, yes I was. Yeah. Going through life aimlessly. I could not see how to make the right decisions. Always going the wrong road, down the wrong road, getting stuck in the mud with no one to help. Oh, yeah. One time, I got stuck in the mud and there was nobody there. Yeah. And I was so far down on the dead end road. Right. And nobody there to come down where I was. But Jesus. Yes. Now I know why I've been through what I've been through. Right. This happened so the power of God could be seen in me. Because I'm not the same as I used to be. If you be in Christ, you're a new creature. Yes, yes. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Yes, I can't explain why God allowed me to be the person I was. It's still a mystery to me. But this I do know. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was messed up, but now I'm fixed up. I once was going down the wrong road, but now I'm going up the right road. I once was sick, but now I'm healed. Once was bad, but now I serve a good Savior who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his majesty. I'm so thankful this morning about Jesus. Jesus is able to take our mess, put some spit on it, and make it a message of life for the whole world to see. Oh yeah, Jesus is able to 
take it out of yes. yes. and make it a message yes. just by spitting the word of the gospel. Yes. And this morning, this is the day. Yes. Your opportunity. Yes, sir. If you don't know Jesus like I know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus for the free pardon of your sins, if you don't know Jesus, that can make a way out of nowhere. If you don't know Jesus, they can take your mess and make it a message of light. If you don't know Jesus, who can fix you up when you're torn down. If you don't know Jesus, they can open the door that was closed for you because I had something open for me that was closed. If you don't know Jesus, they can fix you up this morning. This is your day. If you haven't had a miracle in your life in a long time, or maybe you've never experienced a miracle today in your life, so the Jesus still performing miracles. Yes, he is. He still has all power in his hand. This is your day. The door of the church is open. I'm finished. I once was blind, but now I see. And all the things that happened in our life, all the things that happened in our life, it was done for the power of God to be seen in you. Uh -huh. And it's no mistake that you're here to hear this message this morning because all of us is going through something right now. All of us face opposition out in this world. And we're going to Lift the banner for Jesus going forward. We're going to need the power of God in our life to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. And I declare today that Jesus has the power and he's asking us to come to him right now. And I don't take it for granted that everybody here has been saved. Right. You might have grew up in the church like me, but I had to come to Jesus as an adult making him decide that I want to walk with the Lord. I want to be saved. I don't, yeah. want, I don't want to be religious like folk going to church just religious. I want to have a true relationship with Jesus. I want to experience the power of Jesus in my life. And if that's you, you need to come to this moment and say, I come symbolically because I want to get closer to God and I want Jesus to move in my life like he never moved. And if you just need a church home, God has given us the authority from the Bible. You can come by 11. Yeah. You can come on to by baptism. Yes. You can come on Christian experience. However you want to come. Yes. Thank you, Maybe just be special prayer right now because you know that you kind of walked away from God. It's very work God. You haven't felt God in your life in a while. And I want to I want to taste it and see it. How good it is. Just maybe you need special prayer. This is your time. We get ready to close. This is your time. The Spirit is moving on you, Father. Take me back to the Lord. Come on, put your hands together.